In our last video, we covered how you can become a citizen scientist and help document species occurrences in New River Gorge National Park and Preserve, Gully River National Recreation Area, and Bluestone National Scenic River by uploading them into the iNaturalist app. In this video, we're going to talk about some of our most concerning emerging invasive species that we'd like for you to know how to identify and put into iNaturalist if you observe them in our three parks. Hi, I'm Katie, a biological science technician here at the three West Virginia River Parks. And I'm Anna, a biological science technician for the Eastern Rivers and Mountains Network. In the last video, we talked about how invasive species are not native to this area, spread rapidly to the detriment of our native species and ecosystems. There are many different invasive species that impact places around the world, and the New River Gorge, Gully River, and Bluestone River are not exceptions. Along with the Natural Resource Management staff for the National Park Service, we work hard to perform early detection monitoring and develop treatment plans to address a number of different invasive plants and insects throughout these three parks. But there are always areas we miss and where an invasive species is causing a problem. When exploring in any of our three river parks, we encourage you to take an active role and be on the lookout for invasive species. Utilizing the iNaturalist app is a great way to document the locations of these problem species especially those that are still at a relatively low level. To help you focus in on emerging threats, the National Park Service has developed early detection watch lists in iNaturalist that include photos and identification features for species of concern. These guides can be found by searching the park's name in the Guides tab of the iNaturalist website, or by navigating to the Invasive Species Project for each park and clicking on the link in the project description. There are dozens of invasive species that can be found throughout New River Gorge, Gully River, and Bluestone, but some can cause more damage to an ecosystem than others. The following invasive species are our most wanted and the ones we want citizens of science using the Naturalist app to be looking out for the most. The first species we want you to be vigilant about is Japanese barberry. This is a woody shrub that is commonly planted in yards and urban landscaping. The shrub is characterized by its small spoon-shaped leaves that can vary in color from green to a dark red. Most cultivated varieties of this plant will have dark red leaves, while naturalized plants will usually be green. The branches are lined with sharp spines, and small berries that start green and ripen to red appear in late May and can persist throughout the winter. What gives Japanese barberry such alarming invasive potential is that it can thrive in full shade and invade the forest understory, outcompeting native tree seedlings and herbaceous plants. Japanese barberry also creates the perfect microclimate for an explosion of tick populations due to the dense shrubby thicket it forms, potentially leading to more tick-borne diseases such as Lyme disease. This species was put on the West Virginia noxious weed list in July 2020 and is now no longer available to be sold in the state. The next invasive species of concern is Bradford pear, which is a cultivated variety of the calorie pear tree. This small tree is another popular ornamental plant often used in landscaping and is known for the distinctive white fly flowers that bloom at the very beginning of spring before the leaves appear. The blooms are also infamous for smelling like rotting fish. Leaves are one and a half to three inches long and are glossy dark green above and paler below. In the fall, the leaves can turn a dark red. Bradford pear was originally cultivated from calorie pear to not pollinate and produce fruit, but many other cultivated versions of calorie pear have been developed, which can cross with other, other varieties and produce fruit. The fruit can be spread by birds and Bradford pear trees can rapidly establish dense stands and invade open fields and disturbed areas, which chokes out the growth of other native plants. The last invasive species on this most wanted list is the spotter and lanternfly. This insect hasn't been found in any of our three national parks yet, but we assume it eventually will reach this area if it isn't here already. Spotted lanternfly was first detected in Pennsylvania in 2014 and has since spread throughout most of the state and into neighboring states. This insect feeds on over 70 trees and agricultural plants, and large swarms can be found around the bases of trees in areas where it is infested. Counties and states with the spotted lanternfly must undergo quarantine orders to inspect vehicles, wood products, and other equipment before entering into other counties due to the huge threat it poses to forests and agriculture. Young nymphs of the spotted lanternfly are black with white spots and can be found from April through July, while older nymphs will be red with white spots and are present from July through September. 
Adults are about one inch long and have a very striking coloration with black dots on the wings and vibrant red underwings. Adults can be seen from July through December. Egg masses have a white putty-like appearance that resembles caked mud and can be found on any hard surface. While we hope you don't find any of these invasive species in our parks, any occurrences that you do find and document will be a great help to us. There are other species that we'd like you to be on the lookout for, and you can find those lists on the Guides tab on the iNaturalist app. We'd like you to look for anything you'd like to record because it might be a rare or a threatened species. Have fun while being out in our national parks and being a citizen scientist to help us out.